Welcome to the Institute for Strategic Policy Solutions. My name is Kimberly Jackson and I'm the Executive Director of the Institute. I'm so happy to have you here. I want to welcome our participants and partners. We have with us Erica Moulton, who is the Director of the Bay Pine Center with St. Petersburg College, who's been instrumental in helping us set this up, as well as Keep Pinellas Beautiful with Stephanie Ellington. And they have been, uh, they were just wonderfully excited about us doing a beach cleanup. However, under the unfortunate circumstances of the coronavirus, we were un unable to do that. So we decided to bring it all here and we hope that the participants live have a lot of questions for us, but we have a 30 day exciting challenge of environmental um, challenges for you. This program was a part of the Institute Sea Level Rise Initiative that started after the Sea Level Rise Conference in 2015. We have a group of dedicated individuals who have been doing this for a long time. I'd like to acknowledge them now. Their Facebook page can um, be found on our webpage. There's a link to it connecting from our web, web page to theirs. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Institute as you're looking at the sea level rise for one moment. The, sea, the Institute for Strategic Policy Solutions was the brainchild of Congressman Bill Young. It was his dream and his mission to have uh, real nonpartisan conversations about what government can and can't do, with, do for you, essentially the scope of government from a social, economic, and political standpoint. We have a mission card, if you'll put that up for me, Kyle. This mission card talks about what we do. We enhance understanding, we educate students, and we engage conversation on issues that are germane and important to the community at the local, state, regional, and national level. If you look on our website, you'll see a special message from Congressman Gus Villarakis that was student driven on the coronavirus and we will continue to have more programs like this virtually um, as we deal with this current challenge. So we talked a little bit about the Q&A feature of Zoom today and we hope that you have conversations because a Zoom conference is only as good as the conversation that ensues after. I want to briefly again thank our partners ahead of time for supporting us and mention the students and the other uh, SPC collaborative students who have helped us. Uh, when we started the Institute, I wanted to make sure that we had young people involved from the onset. And we have Ashley and Sierra who are our first uh, Institute for Strategic Policy Solutions Fellows. They have single-handedly along with Jonathan and Nicole who are SPC students one of who is with the College of Business Sustainability Program, and the other, Nicole, is the president of the Environmental Club. And it was their brainchild to think of how we could get more students engaged and care about the environment with action plans. You'll hear from them later. And I also want to note that our beautiful partner at STEM Center has robust programs that Erica will talk about later, as does Keep Pinellas Beautiful, and I invite them to speak at this time. Erica, again, thank you so much. I look forward to your presentation. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to uh, engaging conversation afterwards as well. Um, so again, I'll introduce myself. I'm the director of the St. Petersburg College STEM Center. Um, we are the newest camp, so I have to go back a slide because now we have Keep Vanilla's Beautiful Love. There you go. Um, so we're the newest campus um, of the St. Petersburg College system. Uh, we are located between uh, the VA hospital and Madeira Beach K-8 school. Uh, it's a single building on campus um, and it's been open just about two years. So if you haven't had a chance to visit the STEM Center um, and all of you who had been planning to participate in our cleanup would have uh, been there soon. Um, but if you haven't had a chance, we do encourage you to stop by soon. Um, the campus is home to classrooms, labs, and meeting spaces, um, as well as 50 acres of property. Um, so there are 50 acres, including some uplands, which is uh, pine trees and um, little oak. We also have wetlands and a mangrove estuary habitat uh, out there at the STEM Center as well. Um, and SBC students from any campus can take courses that are sent given faculty or students. So you can come from another campus and take courses at our campus. Um, you can take just one or a series. 
Um, all you have to do is look for the BP letters um, in front of a class when you're registering. So we hope to see you out there for a class as well. Um, but the important part of the conversation today is that SPC owns a submerged land rights to the lagoon. So out in the back side of the property within that 50 acres, uh, we do own um, the submerged lagoon out there and we're able to conduct lots of classes um, and have the opportunity for students to participate in science uh, while they're on the property and conduct field science without any intrusion from uh, say rec recreational boaters or people scuba diving or water skiing or those types of things. So um, it's a great place to participate in field science while you're out there at the center. Um, so we're pleased that most all of these activities are STEM related and focus on many of the environmental sciences uh, that our SPC students are interested in pursuing in careers. So we have this big field station essentially for you to get your hands and your feet wet. Um, so however, if you um, haven't ever been out there, um, we'd like you to know that when you do come out, um, you have access to the entire property. We have kayaks, uh, we have field gear, uh, we have binoculars and we have other things for you to use while you're out there. So um, if you've been to the Seminole campus and their nature preserve, we operate in much the same way if you're not there for class. Um, but for purposes of the climate action, we would have been out there doing a cleanup with our partner, Keep Pinellas Beautiful, um, who will get to talk to you in just a few moments. Um, and we do those partnerships through funding um, and donations through Keep Pinellas Beautiful. So right now we're working on a Tampa Bay Estuary Program mini grant that allows us to do cleanups, uh, allows us to do invasive removal, um, it allows us to do plantings, and allows us to conduct other things for habitat restoration out there at the center, and allows you to participate. And so um, to tell you how that works and how we've been doing that over the past two years, I'm going to pass it to uh, Stephanie Ellington, who's going to talk to you about Keep Pinellas. Wonderful. Thank you, Erica. So hi, my name is Stephanie Ellington, and I'm the program director for Keep Pinellas Beautiful. Uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our organization and the wonderful things that we have in play with uh, SBC. So many of you may not be aware, but Keep America Beautiful or Keep Pinellas Beautiful is a part of the Keep America Beautiful system. Uh, Keep America Beautiful began as a campaign organization back in the 50s, right around the time where we started to see the production of plastics. Uh, the idea was that we had this beautiful country. We were looking to develop a way to educate the community on some issues that we were seeing and engage them. Um, similar campaigns such as the Iron Ice Cody with the crying Indian paddling down the waterway, uh, Lassie, Every Little Bit Hurts, all of these um, different campaigns were utilized to educate the community and say, this is the problem, how do we address it? Well, that was great back in the 50s, but over the years we've seen um, that the need for action has taken place. So different organizations such as ours, as well as about a thousand others throughout the United States were developed to really uh, target different issues as grassroots initiatives and grassroots organizations, organizing volunteers, getting them out in the community to take action. So that's a little bit about where we came from. So we have been around for about 25 years. And we are one of roughly 50 organizations in the state of Florida um, that are part of this system. And we are proud to be your Keep America Beautiful affiliate here in Pinellas County. Let's see if I can get this to go. Our mission for the organization is to conserve and beautify our natural environment by means of community engagement and education. We do this through a variety of different core focal areas, but our vision for this is to educate, engage, and empower the community with the hopes that we will be able to instill a responsible um, ownership to the community and creating citizens within our community um, that will take action and care. We do focus on four different areas, litter prevention, waste reduction, conservation, and beautification. These are our four core values. Like many of the other Keep America Beautiful affiliates, we all have very similar uh, focuses, but we do focus on what the need of our community is. So looking at litter prevention, waste reduction, how do we establish healthy ecosystems through conservation, and more recently incorporating that beautification and community greening because it is essential to have a healthy ecosystem, a biodiverse ecosystem for the health of both the ecosystem and our community. Now, we work in a very broad area. Uh, we cover the entire Pinellas County area from Tarpon Springs to Fort DeSoto, from the Bay to the Gulf. Um, so you can imagine with that much coastline, roughly 533 miles of coast, or excuse me, 588 miles of coastline, 
we have a very large impact area. With 80% of our trash originating from inland areas, we have to focus on both our coasts, our beaches, but also our homes, our communities, our neighborhoods. These are areas where a lot of that trash originates. And so we're working to engage the community, educate the community, interact with individuals from all over Pinellas County, roughly about a million now, um, to take action and ownership for that area so that it has a broader impact on the Tampa Bay estuary. So just a little bit about some of our programming. We do have our annual events. Unfortunately, because we weren't able to do our cleanup this season, uh, we're not participating in the Great American Cleanup right now. Uh, that is a Keep America Beautiful signature event where communities all across the United States are, are doing cleanups and different projects to help beautify their area. Um, because of the current situation, we will be extending the, the Great American Cleanup into uh, the summer. So hopefully we'll be able to put something on later, but that is one of our big projects from January to May. In addition to that, we also do our Ocean Conservancy Partnership for the International Coastal Cleanup. I'm sure many of you have heard of this. Uh, this is a time where we itemize the trash. We're looking at different types of trash. And from that data, we understand what the most littered items are. So we're not just making it up when we say cigarette butts are the number one littered item. There's data backing that up across the world from partnerships of people going out and doing cleanups and assessing what the issued areas are. So very cool programs, two of our big cleanup efforts. We work very hard to educate and engage our community through our education programs and our community engagement efforts. Um, from pre free presentations to our schools and businesses and civic organizations, uh, going out and doing projects like this one where Sydney, our, our education coordinator, was working with Girl Scouts, to pulling invasive species removals during our workshops with our students. Um, education is key and core to what we do, so we do really try to reinforce an educational message with everything we do. We tailor presentations and different topics to the need and interest of the groups that we're working with. Uh, we also, as I mentioned, host our summer workshops and one of our other cool programs and initiatives that our students of all ages can get involved in is our Bright Futures Hours. Um, so high school students specifically in this case can apply for our scholarship by doing volunteer hours with us um, from bringing in cans and different recyclables during our program. We accumulate funds and those funds go to scholarships. And in fact, last year, two of our SPC students that were in the nursing program received the scholarship. So you can see that we're trying to impact the community in every little way that we can, even if it's not directly cleanup related, our volunteers mean very much to us. We also are working with uh, environmental professionals, professionals of all ages. Um, we do have an internship program where whether you're interested in grant writing, cleanups, um, education, business, understanding how a nonprofit works, all of those things. Um, we allow you to gain experience with us, help us grow as part of our internship program. And I believe I currently have at least one SBC student in my internship program for the spring semester. So it's a pretty great program. We also have our adoption initiatives and our beautification efforts, as I mentioned earlier. Um, one very special part of SBC Bay Pines is they are part of our adopt a community program where they have taken ownership of their property and the surrounding area and are contributing through cleanups, invasive species removals, they report the data, we supply supplies and support. Uh, it's really a beautiful program because it allows citizens to truly take action for, and ownership for their area. So whereas you can participate in a cleanup anywhere within the community, that's beneficial, but you're not seeing the at-home ownership. So what we do with our adoption programs is we're finding those roadways, we're finding the trail, we're finding the communities in need, and then activating that community member to take action. And it's a very cool program. It truly is citizen engagement. Let's see. Our beautification efforts, we do everything from invasive species removals to cleanups to plantings. We have several community gardens within the community. Again, trying to reinforce that a healthy ecosystem isn't just about litter. It also is looking at the biodiversity of the species and how we can help create more native habitat within the area. Again, reflecting on SBC Bay Pines, they have wonderful initiatives and have received grants to help increase the biodiversity of their space, looking at the presence of gopher tortoises, looking at native species, removing invasives, again, all things that we try to support through our efforts. 
and it's uh, pretty cool that you have it right in your backyard. And the thing you can be doing right now, even in the current situation, is our litter hotline. We have this amazing program where we're trying to engage the community to report areas of need. So illegally littered areas. Um, so illegally, um, uh, ooh, excuse me, uh, like very excessively littered areas, but also illegal dumping, such as furniture. Um, sometimes you see construction debris, things like that on the sides of the road. So what you can do is contact this number. It is still active during this time. And we have a crew that will go out there, assess the situation and help manage it, whether contacting code enforcement um, or notifying the municipality or just taking the debris away at that time. This is a really, really important thing right now because we're not activating our volunteers. We're trying to recognize the need and the safety of our volunteers is essential. So you tell us when you're on your walks or when you're driving to go get food of areas and we will do the work right now. Let us help you that way. Let us help the environment that way. So just to give you a little bit of a background um, of what last year looked like, pretty great year. Uh, in total, we worked with over three, 430 educational presentations. We hosted those within the community. We participated in 40 outreach events, educating a total of 50,000 individuals within the community and activating 20,000 plus individuals to take action within their community. Those are cleanups, those are invasive species removals, those are those projects. We did over 1,100 projects, but the real cool part of this is look at the numbers. Last year, we removed over 500,000 pounds of litter from the community. We removed over 225,000 pounds of invasive vegetation. And we removed over 15,000 pounds, or roughly 14,000 pounds of recyclables. Now that number may seem a little weird, but please keep in mind that the recyclables that we find within our cleanups cannot always be recycled because of the contamination. So. While it's not as high, we're pretty proud of those numbers. Now, you can't see last year's numbers, but the trash and the debris are decreasing while our projects and our volunteer hours are increasing. So we're really seeing an impact with the efforts that we're doing. In total, over 56,000 volunteer hours participated last year. And keep in mind, we are a staff of six. Our volunteers are everything to us. They are why we do what we do. So, we're really trying to reinforce to take action when you can get back out into the environment, when we can be together again, because it will happen. We're looking for you to be a part of our programming. We're looking for you to help make the next young environmental steward through our education, adopt an area in need, or just come out and say, hey, and help us with a project. So I will leave you with my information. Um, when, we, when we all participate together, we really can make a big effort. And, and make change within our community. So I'm happy to uh, take any questions at the end. And at this point, I'm gonna pass this off to our ISPS fellows. Now I do apologize if I have the names wrong. I believe it's Ashley and Sierra, or is it Nicole? Yes, right. perfect. There you go, <laughs> wonderful. Perfect, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you. Uh, my name is Sierra, I'm an ISPS fellow. And my name is Ashley Rutenbeck, and I am also an ISPS fellow with Sierra. Okay, so now our original plan was to be out and connect with the community about climate change through engagement, such as the STEM Center cleanup. However, due to our current circumstances, we moved our event to, the onla to online. Um, our new program allows participants to do the challenge at home, which is for convenience and safety. I just wanna highlight some of the dates that aren't repetitive to give you guys an idea of what the challenge is about. But first, please make sure you guys are showing your progress through pictures and are using all three of the hashtags, which are Clean Up for Climate, ISPS, and SPC College. Okay. April 2nd is a Craft Thursday, which promotes participants to find and make their own piece of art from things they found around the house. I know me personally, I do stuff, I do have stuff around the house that could be reused for something productive other than just taking up space. April 4th is a lights off day. It's where you go throughout the entire day using only natural light. If we all turned off two lights for an hour, we would save 5 million kilowatt, hour, kilowatt hours of electricity which would also in return save you money on your energy bill. April 9th is the Global Footprint Calculator. 
it's really cool and it and 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 informative it allows you oh it tells you how many earths we would need in order it tells you how many earths we would need if everyone lived the same way you did i was able to do this a couple of days ago and the results really made me take a look at how efficiently i thought i was living so i really advise everyone to go and take a look at that April 21st is create a compost bin day. The reason that this is so important, it's because you'd be saving waste from the landfill and improving the environment. The link on how to properly do this is available below on the calendar, but you can also email me or Ashley. I'll link our information in the chat. And lastly, April 25th is a cleanup day where you take the opportunity to go around your neighborhood and pick up trash and separate the waste from the recyclables. Now we decided to put place this close to the end of the month again due to our situation hopefully when everything is better so that you'll be able to go out, out into your community and help out i also want to say that um, the survey that is linked in the calendar will be um you'll need to register that so that we'll be um able to dot able to, we'll need to fill out their efforts to um, have it documented. Now this information will also determine the top people who be recognized as far as prizes. I'd now like to introduce Ashley. She's going to be explaining the repetitive challenges. Ashley. Hello everyone again. So just like Sierra said, we really do and we really did want to influence community involvement with this calendar, but of course with our current situation, we did want our participants to and understand the importance of safety during this time and we really want to make sure that people follow the rules set by the government under our current situation. So just like she said, that is exactly why we changed the original plans for the calendar and switched it over to an almost entirely virtual challenge. Of course, this challenge is, is still created to make an impact um, because m many of these events on the calendar will empower people to change some of their daily habits that could be negatively impacting the, the world. So our weekly events were made to create a habit or a pattern in hopes to influence our participants to continue after the four week challenge is already over. So I will highlight those now. The one of the repetitive events that does come every week would start on April 1st and that is a walk it out Wednesday. So before we did switch this to a virtual challenge, we were encouraging people to uh, walk to school or work. Um, most people aren't going to school or work right now. So we're just influencing you to get outside, um, go take a short walk. Uh, if you live with your family, take a short walk with them just around your neighborhood. Make sure you're staying safe. Um, don't go too far from home. Uh, but that is just giving a positive outlook of staying inside at this time. Another day would be uh, Switch It Up Sunday. So we created Switch It Up Sunday so that people can switch something that they use in their daily life that could help the environment. The example that we can use is on April 5th is the first Switch It Up Sunday. We're influencing you to switch to eco-friendly light bulbs. Uh, another one would be switching to reusable bottles or reusable bags like uh, grocery bags. We have the statistic there on the calendar. When you do download that calendar, it'll tell you that the average American family does use 1500 plastic grocery bags every year. So we're asking you to opt for using reusable ones like cloth ones. And the same thing with reusable bottles and reusable straws. We're just trying to reduce the amount of non-reusable material. So another, another thing that I would like to mention is we will be making links available for you guys to go on through Amazon. We have found some very low priced items to be purchased. We understand that some people might be in a financial bind right now, so we do want to make those items at least a little bit cheaper than you might be finding by going to your local grocery store that's still open at this time. Uh, this way you don't have to leave your house and go anywhere to go and purchase those items. So those links will be available to you to go and buy the reusable straws and bottles as well. Another day that is repetitive on the calendar would be Meatless Monday. Some people might ask what that would do for our environment. It is a very odd day when you think about it. So the statistic is that one meat-free meal per family of 
per family of four, excuse me, per week has the same impact as driving a hybrid car. So that is really, really, that will make a difference. The last repetitive day that we do have on the calendar is going to be on Fridays. So this is just kind of a relaxed day where we're just asking you to go to this website. The link will be attached on the calendar with the list of events. The website is called The Story Stuff. This website offers a bunch of different videos talking about um, issues within the climate. So they have a video on plastic pollution, pollution in general, uh, and just stuff like that, just to give you some more information about what is going on in the environment and how you can change your ways to uh, basically better your lifestyle in order to help the environment. And at this time, I will say that the people that will be participating in this four week challenge. Just like Sierra mentioned, those hashtags are how we are going to be able to see that you are participating. We are uh, say, telling everyone to make sure you're posting every day, every day that you participate in one of these events with all three of those hashtags so that we can keep track of who will receive recognition at the end and receive a, a award. The recognitions will be made on April 29th, so make sure that you attend that Zoom meeting. Uh, it will be the same format that this meeting is right now, and it's going to be at 5.30 p.m. We will recognize those top participants and we will have those awards for them. If the current situation or the situation how it is now is when the ending Zoom meeting is, we will most likely be sending those awards to you through mail. If our situation here is better, we might have a pickup location for you if you are close to that pickup location. But if you are not, then we are available to send that to you through mail. Additionally, me and Sierra, uh, everyone basically that did involve uh, themselves with the making of this four-week challenge would like to thank SGA for their support. Uh, it's because of them that we have this opportunity to actually award our participants with prizes. Now I would like to introduce Nicole from the Environmental Club and then Jonathan after her for a few words of encouragement. Thank you, Ashley. Like you said, my name is Nicole Strauss. I'm the president of the Environmental Club at St. Petersburg College, Tarpon Springs campus. Um, currently, we are the only environmental club with St. Petersburg College. So, you know, it's pretty nice having a few hundred members. Um, what we like to do mostly is we do a lot of beautification projects around campus and at different beaches. Uh, we do a lot of invasive species removals, gardening, we partner a lot with Keep Pinellas Beautiful. You know, they're a great company to work with and other local companies. Um, besides that, we also like to kayak and incorporate, you know, being environmental throughout that. Um, sadly, with the corona outbreak, we had to cancel a lot of our events and, you know, all of our Earth Day that we were planning. But luckily, ISPS, this is a great way for not only the club, but others to participate. This is a great way for everyone to become more aware of what's going on in our you know, environment. And I feel this is great for people to become more environmental and, you know, just kind of get everything back up. And plus, who doesn't love a little challenge while being stuck at home? Um, that's pretty much all for the Environmental Club. So I'm going to hand it over to Jonathan. He's from the College of Business Sustainability Program. Hi, thank you, Nicole, and thank you for all the attendees. And I'd also like to send a special thank you to uh, uh, Ashley and Sierra for putting together this four-week uh, calendar. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it was. It started out as a little idea, um, you could say a seed, and it blossomed into uh, what I think is a very wonderful challenge that should be a, that seems to be very promising for the community alike. Uh, I'd like to start out by uh, telling what the sustainability program has meant to me at SPC. Now, I've always been a nature person. I've loved studying it, being out in it, um, and I, which is why I decided to enroll in biology classes right out of high school. But I started to realize that in order for me to go out and make a difference, uh, the difference that I wanted to make, I think I figured out that a uh, business route would be uh, better suited for me. Uh, the sustainability program 
I took an array of classes from management, supply chain, and marketing. And collectively, they've helped me see the bigger picture, how everything in the environment is connected, and how what we do here in Tampa Bay can have lasting effects on the other side of the globe. Now, it's also taught me to think more in terms of a long-term process. Uh, the common business approach, thinking 10, 20 years in advance, looking for profits, uh, it just doesn't equate for me anymore. Um, so we have to realize that, you know, a lot like um, what we're doing on this side of the earth, it can affect others. What we're doing now, what we're manufacturing and how we dispose of that will have everlasting effects for thousands of years down the road. So that leads me to how this challenge began. Um, me and my wife, we've always been into cleaning up picking up trash, beach cleanups. <clears throat> we do a lot of kayaking and we always come back with a kayak full of trash. Um, but traveling around the state, we've noticed that Tampa Bay is much worse than other areas. And that is because of all the, the amount of people that live here. But on the flip side, glass is half full. With more people, there's more people to help. So that's where the challenge came up. I figured it would take uh, a small scale, just me and my wife cleaning up or other individuals and uh, turning it into a, a larger scale um, event. And uh, I also wanted to make it more competitive because who doesn't like a little friendly competition to see who picked up the most trash or who uh, went out and uh, enjoyed a nice night walk and saw a beautiful sunset. So again, that's what our hashtags will be for to uh, that we can reference back and see who has been participating. And then the reasons for the beach cleanup. As Stephanie mentioned earlier, Pinellas in general, but, uh, or Pinellas, but Florida in general is surrounded by water. And because of that, tourists come here <laughs> and they don't want to come down to a trashed environment that isn't um, as beautiful as it should be. Uh, and the other reason, animals. Uh, the intertidal community that we live in here in Tampa Bay is one of the most biodiverse areas in the world. Um, so in order to protect that, or we need to protect that in order to uh, provide a well-being for other species. And these are all reasons that I encourage everyone to participate in this challenge. And uh, thank you again for attending, and I'll send it back to Ashley and Sierra for further discussion. Thank you, Jonathan. So right now, me and Sierra are going to open the floor up to anyone that has questions in the Q&A box. Additionally, if you would like to get in contact with me or Sierra for any questions about the Institute or the challenge in general, or would like us to just check in with us during the four week challenge, me and her are putting our email addresses into the chat box for you guys to have. So if you guys do have any questions, just go ahead and ask us in that Q&A box and we can respond to them. Okay. The first question that says, if we want to share post ideas, how do we do that? And to answer that, you can either email me and Ashley, like she said before, because our email will be um, linked in the box, or you can go on our Facebook page, which is also um, on the calendar as well, so that you can share those ideas. Okay, next question, it says, Stephanie, you mentioned a scholarship opportunity. How do you, oh, do, do you have an application we can access? Yes, you can hear me. Perfect. Yes. So our scholarship as of right now is open for fre incoming freshmen. So students who are still in high school, who are in the process of completing their Bright Futures hours, we have opportunities for them to volunteer with us, whether out in the community um, during projects or through collections of recycling or working in our office. It's a, it's a whole variety of different ways that they can get involved. In doing that, when they receive their hours, at the end of their time, they can apply for our scholarship. Now, it's not a million dollars, but it is funds that can assist with books or, or dorms or anything like that. Um, and we do that 
each year at our annual awards luncheon. So for more information, please contact me. I'll put my email again in the chat. Um, and again, you had two SPC students receive it last year for doing their wonderful work with us. So uh, in the future, we will hopefully be able to, as we receive more funding, uh, expand this to something that could be open to our interns or to college students who are participating with us. But again, as of right now, that is for high school students going into that freshman year. Thank you. Uh, the next question is for Erica. It says, what types of activity do you plan to do in the future when we are virus free? Um, we have quite a few activities planned. Uh, one right now we are working, um, if anybody in the area has been to the Florida Aquarium, um, the Florida Aquarium um, has mangroves inside their wetlands gallery. And right now uh, their mangroves inside the building are seeding. And so what they're doing is they're gathering the mangrove seeds uh, from the red mangroves and we'll be working with Keep Pinellas Beautiful and the Ford Aquarium to do a planting out there at the habitat um, around the STEM Center. Um, so that's one event, um, reintroduction of mangrove trees along the coastline out there where they should be. Um, we'll also have some more cleanups while we're out there. Um, and then we also have um, a large number of plants being purchased from Wilcox Nursery uh, in the Tampa Bay area that'll be part of the uh, upland habitat restoration where we've previously pulled out Brazilian pepper with uh, Stephanie and her group at Keep Pinellas Beautiful and SPC students. Um, so lots of uh, positive fun stuff, more planting and uh, a little less uh, trash pickup, um, we hope, but we'll see uh, once we get back out there to be on site. Thank you. Um, the next question is for Ashley. It says, when and how will you have the wrap up award ceremony? Okay. Uh, so the award ceremony will be during the Zoom meeting on April 29th at 5.30. That is going to be our ending ceremony where we just talk about some stuff about the actual four-week challenge and how everyone did. And that's when we would recognize those people that did use those hashtags and post the most and I was the most uh, active, I guess you can say, during the challenge. That's when we would give them recognition for um, winning those prizes. Thank you. Um, next question is for Nicole. It says, what types of activity does your club generally do? All right, so being an environmental club, we usually like to do a lot of beautification projects. So recently we've been doing some campus cleanups, um, go around and removing some invasive species. We have a little pond out there, so we go on and move all like, you know, the trash and compost. And then aside from that, uh, we like to partner with Cape Pinellas Beautiful and Clearwater and do some beach cleanups and park cleanups. And then we also like to do a lot of kayaking trips. And then uh, usually three times a semester we'll do different presentations on you know, buzz on bees, microplastic, and, you know, anything to bring awareness to the public. Thank you. Um, next question is for the ISPS fellows. How do we become more active with the Institute? Well, I can answer that one. Um, you can become more active with the Institute by going on our Facebook page or going to our website. It tells you the um, list of events we've worked with and the ones that are we're going to be working with up up and coming when this virus is ended. Also, you can get in touch with me and Ashley personally, and we can just give you um, feedback on how we got to where we where we are now with the Institute and what our um, jobs are basically geared towards. So we could do that. All right, um, next question is for Erica and Stephanie. Why are these cleanups so important and why do you think our community does not show up as much as they should? Um, I'll go first. Um, they're really important, particularly for small spaces like the STEM Center. Um, this is a brand new facility for the college. Um, the habitat has always been there, but kind of in a, what we would call a state of disrepair. And so when we partnered originally two years ago with Keep Pinellas Beautiful, we we're able to haul out oh, approximately 3,500 pounds of trash and debris and then really assess the habitat. And then where we are now 
is the habitat itself. We've been receiving um, weekly calls from fish and wildlife. Um, we have a great habitat with amazing plant life out there, um, but some of the critters that should be present in that habitat weren't living there because of the inundation of debris and non-native plants. And so now that we've done all this restoration work, what's happening is we are becoming a home for waif gopher tortoises. So as FWC is releasing tortoises that were um, being rehabilitated um, during the, the past six or eight months and they're ready for release, uh, they've, been able, they've been able to come out to the STEM Center um, while we're all not there, uh, which is perfect timing, and release tortoises. So right now, um, the STEM Center is now home to five uh, brand new uh, gopher tortoises. So if you log into the um, at SPC STEM Center, our Facebook page, uh, we actually have a naming contest going on right now. So the first tortoise was, of course, we named him Titan because that's the SPC mascot, but we need names for the other four. Um, so that's one example. Um, and then also um, it gives people a chance to connect to their community um, and really understand that, um, I'll let uh, Stephanie talk about it. Maybe there's some differences between point and non-point source pollution and, and how trash travels around Tampa Bay and how we're all equally responsible for that. Yeah, so it's important to remember that, um, touching on the second point of this question, that I don't know if it's not so much that the community doesn't show up, but that they may not know. They may not be aware of some of the issues that are impacting the area uh, and some of the projects and events that are taking place. So it's important to uh, understand our audiences and make sure we're disseminating the information out the best we can. So all of our events can be found on social media, uh, our website, we're going to groups doing conversations like this to really educate and engage the community on the issues. Um, as I mentioned earlier, 80% of our trash travels from inland areas. So while our beaches are the, the best area people want to go and do cleanups there, that's not necessarily where the sources are. And Erica mentioned point source, knowing exactly where the trash is coming from, non-point source, having trash come out of trash cans that are blowing air or truck driving that has trash in the back. Um, all of these things are important to remember because the trash is traveling. It's, it's not always in the same spot. So, um, we live in a community that has beautiful resources. We also live in a community that the economy is driven by these beautiful resources. So it's very important both for the health of the habitat, for the health of our community, for the economic health of our community, that we take action and do these efforts um, and that we make sure that everyone knows that we've got different projects out there for you. And it's, you don't have to be in the dirtiest area. There are areas that need it. Um, there are areas that you'll get your, you'll get your hands dirty. Um, but there's lots of different projects and one that I think fits for everybody. So uh, very good question. I hope that helps. Thank you. Um, next question says, Ashley and Sierra, will you provide weekly updates? If so, how do we access them? Will they be on the ISPS Facebook page or the ISPS website, the blue and white or workplace Facebook? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and answer that question. So. As of right now, since with the challenge, we are encouraging our participants to post on any social media platform that they have, which would be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, me and Sierra will be doing our weekly updates on the ISPS Facebook page. In addition to me and Sierra, since we are active on our own social media platforms, I believe that Sierra is more active on her Twitter account and Facebook, and I'm very active on my Instagram account. So. On my Instagram account, I have created a highlights or a story on my Instagram for this challenge to post videos every day or weekly about the challenge just to help anyone that's following me on those accounts to get them through the challenge. Like if you don't understand a certain day or what you're supposed to post for a certain day, you can just email us or look for me and Sierra on our social media accounts and just ask us that question like, Hey, for Walk It Out Wednesday, what kind of post do you want to see? And we would be able to tell you, like, just post a picture when you're on your walk. Uh, take a picture of where you were walking down your street, who you were walking with, and just tell us how you feel. Uh, what were you thinking about? Anything, really, just to let us know that you're active. Those weekly updates will come to you just to make sure you guys are doing okay. And if you don't see those weekly updates, just go ahead and send us an email and we'll make sure that we will get in contact with you weekly. Thank you, Ashley. Um, for this next question, I'm gonna open the floor to anyone who would like to answer it. 
It says, are the issues improving because of the lack of travel and the effects of the COVID-19 virus? Um, I'd like to chime in. So I, I think that most everybody, depending on which social media platform you've used, but it's made its rounds, you know, there's definitely pictures coming out of Italy. Um, some are fake, some are real. Um, there's not dolphins in the canals, but there are small fish and things returning. Um, but locally here in the community, I'm noticing some other environmental organizations um, posting resources to actually uh, go outside and start listening for frog calls and bird calls. Um, and even myself, just in my own experience, um, talking with my uh, neighbors over the fence, kind of noticing, wow, I had no idea we had so many songbirds present. I've never heard them before, but there's less cars, there's less traffic. So um, I think in general that worldwide environmental issues are seeing some improvement. There's definitely pictures out there of, you know, downtown uh, Los Angeles and New York with less haze. But um, I think that um, the noticeable differences may be more regional and local uh, first before they're a bigger impact, but that's the best place to start is in your own home. Yeah, and I think Erica really touched on that, that the social, like the understanding of uh, what's out there for our community to get and enjoy nature really will, it'll be a new awareness, I think, after this. The appreciation for nature will definitely be there after we're all released from the confines of our home. Um, but it's it's important to remember that um, while we're not at the beaches, we're still uh, able to make decisions on like our consumer based um, materials that we're using and things like that. Those are things that we can do at home. So when we're buying lots of water or we're buying lots of materials in preparation, making the right choices, um, that will have a long term effect. So I think, you know, keeping an eye out because the news is showing, you know, reduce pollution and things like that. Um, we will see that there aren't any definitive facts out there yet. But um, it's going to be interesting to see when we all reemerge how much we appreciate nature and, and hope to make more changes in our everyday actions. Thank you. Um, next question is for Ashley. It says, what can we do at home to get involved with this four week challenge? Okay, so uh, with the four week challenge, it was created or changed from a big community involvement challenge to something that you can do from your from your home. Almost every single event was made so that you can do it with regards to the guidelines of the government of the current situation. So definitely be involved every single day, start posting every single day, make sure you're really understanding why we do want you guys to do this because the challenge is created to make an impact. Just like how I mentioned in the, in the beginning, the calendar will empower people to make some of the changes in their daily life that could be negatively impacting our climate. So definitely just make sure you're keeping up with the calendar and posting every day. And that's how you can be involved the most is make sure you just post every day because then at the end of the challenge, when we do that ending ceremony where we uh, recognize everyone in the top participant top participants get rewarded with the awards, there's nothing better than that than to have that those posts every day and seeing the changes that you have made in your daily life. Um, well, if there are no more further questions, I just want to say thank you all for coming and participating with us. And now I'm going to pass it over to Kimberly Jackson for our ending remarks. I just want to say that you all did an exceptional job. I'm so excited for this four week challenge. I think that the students have outdone themselves with trying to be creative under the circumstances. They were incredibly excited and Ashley and Sierra and Jonathan and Nicole, thank you for putting the effort in for the work in. And I know that over the next four weeks, you will continue to encourage our student population and our Florida college system sisters uh, students to participate. All this information is contained on our website. You can go to solutions.spcollege.edu, again, solutions.spcollege.edu, or you can go to our Facebook page and we appreciate all support. Facebook.com um, forward slash SPCISPS, again, Facebook.com forward slash SPCISPS. Um, I also want to mention that tomorrow we have our program again with autism. On the 15th, we have a program with Sinking Cities, a movie where we'll be talking again about environmental challenges, but from an eth ethical and economic standpoint. 
And I believe Erica had something she wanted to share as well. Erica, would you like to briefly share before we sign off? I do, yes. At the STEM Center uh, this week on Thursday, we would have been hosting uh, Jean Murphy and Brian Lane, who are well known in the community for their program called Sensing Nature, where they go out and give presentations. They also lead the... Um, Oh, Stephanie, maybe you can help me remember what's the name of the patch program that they work. Um, yeah, they're part of the Florida Naturalist. Right, so you people can actually, just like scouts can earn patches, this is um, an adult uh, program um, where you can earn certificates and patches for understanding things that happen in the natural world. Um, and you can become a certified Florida master naturalist. Um, but they were planning to come to the STEM Center and give a presentation on coexisting with coyotes um, because they are present in our neighborhoods now all over the lower uh, part of Florida. Um, so the information for that will be on the uh, SPC STEM Center Facebook page, and um, I'll pass that information along to um, the Institute participants as well so that you can share it. But it'll be just like this format, and you'll be able to log in and listen to Brian and Jean talk about coexisting with coyotes um, as we move forward here. And um, I suspect that there's going to be a lot more people on evening walks running into coyotes. So it might be a great learning opportunity. Um, and I encourage you to participate. Definitely. I'm one of those people who are on the evening walks and the morning walks that are um, not interested, but I had to learn. Yes. So uh, again, all of this is on our website. Our calendar is there. Sarah and Ashley will um, chime in and help. And the more that you post, the more that we're able to see that the challenge is working. Again, if you have in interest in Nicole's club, please reach out to her. And if you have just interest about what it's like to be a sustainability major, please reach out to Jonathan. I want to again thank Erica and Stephanie for your participation. And my ISPS team, Jacqueline Chewitt and Sharon Panov, I can't do anything without them. And they have been exceptional over the past couple of weeks as we tried to quickly transition all the events we had planned face to face to a virtual platform. Thank you so much for joining the ISPS Zoom session on cleanup for climate. We hope to see you on the 29th.